Yes, ma'am. Hey, Lauren, you have to cue Erica. Good morning, Arkansas, and welcome to Getting to Know Your Fellow Razorbacks. I'm your host, Erica Rankin. Today we're sitting with a student ambassador, Katrina Maldonado. Katrina, let's get started. What is a student ambassador? So a student ambassador is someone that gives tours to prospective students and their families, and so those tours can include housing, campus, or a hybrid tour. How long have you been doing these? This is my third semester to be a student ambassador. What made you get into being a student ambassador? So my older sister was a student ambassador and I just kind of followed her and I applied and went through the interview process and now here I am three semesters <laughs> later. <laughs> How does the interview process work? So there are two steps to it. There is a group interview and then an individual interview. So your first one is your group interview. And then if you make it past the group rounds, you get an individual interview. And then after that, they tell you if you make it or not. And then it's just those two easy steps. Now, is this a paid job or is it volunteer? So it's all volunteer. Um, the only time you would get paid is if you give a tour during a break. So for instance, spring break, winter break, or Thanksgiving break. Do you stay and give tours on these breaks? No, I typically tend to go home just because I live so far away. Why are you a ambassador if it's not a paid position? So I just like making an impact on future students. Uh, you really are the person that's showing them the university and making them feel at home. And so I like to give off good impressions to the students and their families. And so that's something that I enjoy to do. What is your normal size group for these tours? So it depends on a day-to-day -day basis. You can have up to five families or you can have up to 10 families. And so typically towards the weekend, we have larger size groups. Uh, it can be about 30 to 40 people. And then um, during the spring break weeks, we have a ton of families and that can be about 30 to 40 people as well. Where do you take them on their tours? So we can either take them on a housing tour or a campus tour. And so we have certain routes that we follow and we just take them to all the spots and talk about all the different buildings throughout campus and kind of all the different dormitories as well. What is your favorite tour to give? My favorite tour is campus. No, just kidding. It's housing. <laughs> and um, just because you're showing future students on where they're about to live and they're super excited to see the dormitories and they're like, oh, I don't want a community style bathroom because I don't want to share with <laughs> 10 other girls. But um, you make them feel at ease. So uh, housing is definitely my favorite. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you, Katrina. And we'll see you next time. Hello, and welcome to The Daily Show with Drew. And I'm your host, Drew Dorsey. Today, we have an Arkansas Razorback cheerleader, Addison Hart. Addie. When did you start cheerleading? I started cheerleading in junior high. I actually didn't make the eighth grade junior high team, but I tried out the next year and I've been doing cheer ever since. What made you want to be a cheerleader? Well, our junior high school's gymnastics team had dropped right whenever I got to school and cheerleaders tumble and so I was like well I want to do that and so I was just like well I guess I'll just try out for the cheer team and then I also saw other aspects of cheer that I didn't know about like stunting and um, baskets and all that kind of stuff and it just looked like a lot of fun so I was like hey might as well give it a shot. <laughs> and what is your favorite aspect of cheerleading? My favorite aspect is definitely interacting with the fans 110% Whenever you walk on that field and you are responsible for that atmosphere and bringing that atmosphere to the game and bringing smiles to little girls' faces that have little Razorback, you know, cheer uniforms on. It's like I'm an idol and I'm somebody that they look up to. And that's my favorite thing is, you know, just to be somebody that is a good role model and sets a good example for young children out there. And can you tell us a little bit of what it's like being a Razorback cheerleader? Yeah, it's time consuming. Time management is something that I've had to learn in not the easy way. I mean, we have something every day. We have practice, like two hour practices, three hour practices. If coach says he wants it to start it early, we're gonna go early. If he wants it to go till 10 o'clock at night, we're going to 10 o'clock at night. And then on top of that, we have different sports. We have football, basketball, um, gymnastics, volleyball, track. And then on top of that, we have um, events, chancellor's events that they just want us to be at. And so 
it's very time consuming and you know we're always we're always doing something so it's, but it's a it's good but it's also challenging and that's what I love about it all right well that's all we have time for today thanks for watching and join us next time Hey guys, welcome back to Bustamante's Box. I'm sitting here with life enthusiast, Shane White. So Shane, you've talked about living a full life. What, what entails a full life? What have you done? Um, doing everything you possibly can. Don't, if you've ever seen the Yes Man, be, be Jim Carrey, you know, say yes to everything you possibly can. Uh, my, my recent life motto is to leave no stone unturned, no matter what that is, whether it's people, experiences, food, uh, anything just something something you can experience that you might only have that one opportunity to do so so what kind of experiences have you had so far I have lived a full uh, sh and short life so far but it has been extremely full uh, in high school I was a semi-pro wakeboarder on the monster Southwest Division team I uh, did all the filming for that and that would have never happened if I would have never gone on vacation with my dad to Hot Springs, Arkansas and decided that's where I wanted to live. And that just, that fed into things um, like traveling. Uh, I was an assistant horse trainer at one point in my life. I, um, I'm now a chef and I want to be a filmographer. So anything I can do, uh, any stone I can turn, I will. So what's next? I guess trying to be a videographer? Either that or cooking. Uh, I'm Pa food is definitely one of my biggest passions. It's either that or making films. But right now, the opportunities I have that have presented themselves allow me to make food for people, beautiful food, uh, that again, if they can come in and try that, that's a stone that I hope they can turn and maybe that'll influence like any life decision, You know, whether it be a, you feel so good that you propose to your, your date or whatever, just something that you will always remember. And as long as I can do that, I'm happy with my motto. And so what would you say is your favorite food to make? Do you think that makes you the happiest to make? I've uh, been asked that question a lot. I, I have never been able to answer it with a single food. Except for right now. Except for right now. And that would be, my favorite food to cook is a dish that creates an overwhelming sensation between you and whoever you're enjoying that with that is only there's never replicable. Uh, that only happens that one time and is a fleeting moment that is only a, like a tiny fraction of history. And if I can create something that allows you to remember that fraction of history through taste and experience, then that's what, that's my goal. That's beautiful. And that's all the time we have for right now. So catch us later. Catch us later. That was the weirdest thing I've ever said. Hello and welcome back to Teeing Off. I'm Caroline Heitch and tonight we'll be interviewing John Fisher about his experiences with golf. So John, how long have you been playing golf? I've been playing golf since sixth grade. It just kind of started off as something that I can just do by myself and relax and just get away from life and stuff like that. So sixth grade was whenever I first getting started, but high school was whenever it started to become like playing almost every day, so. What made you want to start playing? Um, my dad always played, so I figured if I played, it would give me and my dad kind of a connection and he would just kind of bond. And, you know, we play golf almost every single time that we're together whenever we're holidays, summer, Thanksgiving, we'll, we'll play in Thanksgiving. So it just kind of gives me a connection to my family. My uncle plays golf, my brother plays golf, my grandma plays golf, believe it or not. So <laughs> it's just a way to connect to my family. Mm -hmm. Do you play golf with just your family or your friends too as well? Oh, a lot of my friends don't like to play with me because I'm kind of competitive. But mm -hmm. if I can, for sure, I love playing with my friends. I'll play with anybody. Mm -hmm. Why do you like golf compared to other sports? It's just relaxing because it's almost like you're the only person out there. So it's really just a time to get away from school, work, or whatever is troubling you. Just kind of relax and just you and the golf ball and just swing as hard as you can. <laughs> Would you ever want to play pro golf? Of course. They make so much money. So and just playing for four days, that would be awesome just to get experience, you know, playing around those guys. Mm -hmm. Would you ever want to compete or is that kind of the same thing as pro golf? For sure, yeah. yeah. I think it's pretty much the same thing. I would love to compete. Um, we always have a little competition in my family where we play for Thanksgiving to see who's the best. So I love any kind of competition. What has been one of your favorite memories playing golf? So my little cousin, we decided it would be a great idea whenever she was eight years old to take her on the golf course. So my dad decided to let her drive the golf cart. 
and she accidentally floored it and then drove it right into a, a lake and it almost just went glug, 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 glug all the way down. So me, my brother, my dad, and my uncle had to roll up our sleeves, roll up our pants, and we had to get in there and try Was she out. okay? Yeah, she yeah. was <laughs> crying and stuff, but she was all good. Yeah. Were you always good at golf? No, I'm not even good now, so. <laughs> what lessons have you learned playing golf? Just patience and, you know, just to relax and get out of your own head and just kind of relax for sure. Well, that's it for tonight. Thank you for joining us, John, and I'm Caroline Heitch. <laughs>
and your platform and how passionate you are about serving other people, kind of. So when you competed, what was your platform? My platform was cancer. My grandma had cancer, so I figured that would be something that I had a close connection to that I could talk on. And then you have to have a second platform, which I did Don't Text and Drive, because I've been in two wrecks, and they've both been from me texting. So I figured that would be something I could also be passionate about and push for through my interview. What have you learned from competing in the pageants? I've learned that it can be a confidence builder. You just have to be comfortable in yourself and confident in yourself and they'll see that. And also I've learned how to get along with different kinds of people, whether there's catty girls and it's true, or there's really sweet girls. So it's just a way to get to know different people and really just put yourself out there and try new things kind of. Alrighty, well, thank, that's all about, about all the time we have today. I'll see you back next time, same time, same place. Hi, welcome, thanks for joining us and welcome to the Shane Station. I'm your host, Shane White. Tonight we have journalism major and webmaster, Clarissa Bustamante. Thanks for joining us, Clarissa. What is, it's a wide world with a lot of opportunities out there. So what is your perfect number one job? If you could have anything in the world. There's a lot of options out there, you're right. Um, I think that my ideal job would to be working in California for entertainment news, interviewing celebrities on the red carpet, interviewing them in the studio, just something like that. Uh, I can definitely see you on the red carpet. Uh, nice. I, can, I can see you in a nice gown, interviewing <laughs> extremely famous people. Do you, have, do you have a famous person that you like the most that you would just love to interview? There's a lot of them. I think Leonardo DiCaprio is definitely up there. Um, Johnny Depp, anybody from the cast of Saturday Night Live. And um, yeah, that's about it. Saturday Night Live, can you see yourself working for Saturday Night Live? Absolutely, I love NBC Network in general. If I could work on the news side, if I could work for SNL as a writer, a producer, or if I could even just hold the cue cards while they're doing their thing, I would be completely satisfied. You'd be satisfied with behind the camera. What about on camera for Saturday Night Live? I would love to, but I don't think those people are very, very talented. And I think it takes a very special type of person to be on camera and to be able to do all those different characters, all those different voices and things like that. So as much as I would love to do that, I don't think that I could. Would you rather do the entertainment side of news or would you rather do like the nightly news? I would love to do the nightly news, but I, it's a long way up from you know where we are right now in Fayetteville, it's like market 100, and going all the way up to like New York or California is like market one or two. So it would definitely be harder to do that, but so I'd be cool with either one. L.A. or New York? L.A. for sure. So you, you see yourself in Hollywood? I really just don't like New York. I know that sounds really weird, but it's just there's a lot going on and. The subway system is really confusing. That might be because I've only been there a couple times, but when I was there, I couldn't figure it out. So I don't like New York. So um, do late night shows. You obviously Saturday Night Live is a good late mm -hmm. night show, but do you do you see yourself doing any late night shows like t the Late Show with Jimmy Fallon? I love Jimmy Fallon um, and Jimmy Kimmel. I think those are two of my favorite late night show hosts. Um, I like Jimmy Fallon because of who he is as a person. I think he's hilarious and he's an SNL alum. And I also really like Jimmy Kimmel because of his, the way his show works. I think all of his segments are really hilarious. And um, yeah, I like both of them a lot. I don't like Jay Leno. I'm glad that Jimmy Fallon took over for him, so. Thanks, Clarissa. You heard it here first, so watch out, Jimmy Fallon. She's coming for you. This has been The Shane Station. We'll see you at our next stop. Hello, and thanks for joining us tonight. Today I'm here, and welcome to In Depth with John Fisher. Today I'm here with a former resident of Washington, D.C., Caroline Heitch. Thanks for joining us. So growing up in Alabama, what was it like moving from Alabama to the big city of Washington, D.C.? Well, I was born in Fairhope, Alabama, which probably y'all have no idea where it is. It's way down south next to no Mobile, and it's a really small town. You go to the grocery store and see four people you know. And so moving from that small Fairhope to Washington, Washington D.C. was definitely a transition for all my family. 
Uh, Washington, D.C. is obviously one of the biggest cities in the nation, and so the hustle and bustle is just really different. Yeah, I understand that you were living in Washington, D.C. during 9-11, so what were your memories like that from? Well, I was five years old, and I remember everyone evacuated our classroom. I was in kindergarten, and my father came and picked us up because all three of my sisters were in the same elementary school at the time. And we came home to the town home that we were living in, and I just remember watching the news, and my parents just kept replaying it, and they told us that from our town home, they could feel the hit of the Pentagon from the town home. So it was really intense for us. Mm -hmm. Where would you point a tourist to in to D.C. if it's their first time visiting? Ooh, that's a hard one. Probably one of the museums. I think those were one of our favorite memories. I'm pretty sure there's a science museum that's very hands-on, and as a little kid, I was all over that, so probably one of those. What are the best memories you have living in the nation's capital? Probably just all the touristy things that we did during that. I only lived there for three years because it was while my dad was in seminary up in Virginia, and so probably just every touristy thing you can name. <laughs> so what is the thing you miss most about living in Washington, D.C.? I've always liked the hustle and bustle of a city, and I know that later on in my future that I would love to live in New York or somewhere where it's just always fast-paced and going. And so I think that's probably one of the things I miss the most, especially coming to Fayetteville, which is pretty much a small town. So, What was it like getting used to the cold weather, being from Alabama? Well, Alabama is honestly extremely humid and gross outside. <laughs> so going up to Washington, D.C., where they actually have a winter was different. And also that was like my first experience with snow. And so as a little kid, I was all over that once again. And it was really different, but I loved it way better. I loved the cold. What are the people of Washington, D.C. like? They're really fast-paced, moving. Honestly, probably not as nice as the southern people in Alabama were, but we definitely got used to it. <laughs> <clears throat> Excellent. Thank you for your time, Caroline. That'll do it for In Depth tonight. We'll see you back in better than ever tomorrow. Welcome to Maxed Out. I'm your host, Haley Maxwell, and I'm joined by fellow University of Arkansas student, Drew Dorsey. Drew, so I know that you studied abroad this past summer. Where did you travel to? Well, I was living in Rome, Italy, and for a month. And then we had school Monday through Thursday, so on the weekends I traveled to other places. I went to um, the Amalfi Coast of Italy and then to Nice, France, Florence, Italy, and Barcelona, Spain. And then after that my mom and sister came over and we went to Greece. What made you want to travel there? To Rome, um, I, we have a, a campus there. The University of Arkansas has a Rome Center, and it's faculty led by U of A faculty, and then they have their own staff members over there. And so it was just comforting to know that I was going to be there with University of Arkansas teachers, plus it helped my parents let me to go because it was through the university. Right. So what were some of your favorite experiences? I think my absolute favorite experience was, um, besides just going to class, I took a class with um, an, a little Italian man named Emilio, and it was an art and culture class, it was a humanities class, and we just walked around the city and learned about the culture and art of Rome and the past culture of Rome, which was really interesting because when you live in a place, you know, you, you see the art, like the past is obviously seen in Rome because of all of the historical aspects but you never like really think about it when you're traveling a lot and so this class just really deepened my understanding of Roman history but my favorite like outside of school experience was we went to a Lumineers concert in Barcelona and I was with two of my best friends so it was fun. Did you face any challenges? I did actually um, I got my passport stolen on the way home and it caused my mom and I to stay in Rome for two extra days waiting for the U.S. Embassy to open on Monday morning and we eventually got home but it was just a very hectic process and it's a huge deal when you get your passport stolen because it does have to do with your identity. So, <laughs> What would you say to a student that was thinking about studying abroad? Um, I personally, like, I loved that I was going with somebody that I knew. I went with my roommate from freshman year and it was really nice being able to travel 
there, you know, you're traveling alone to a foreign country. It was nice having Avery there to travel with me. So I would say like if you do know someone in your program, it's a lot better. And also just pick a program at a time that is going to make you feel comfortable. Like I only went for a month because I knew the semester would be too long for me and it was, it was great. Well, thanks for joining us. That's about all the time that we have for today. Tune in next time.